everyone. It's three o'clock, so we are going to get started. My name is Krista Avro. I'm the assessment coordinator here at the Maine DOE for the Maine through year assessment. And just a few quick housekeeping type items before I turn it over to NWEA. Uh, if you have any questions, there are multiple points throughout the presentation that will be stopping and taking your questions. And in addition, feel free to put those questions in the chat as well, and I will relay them to our NWEA folks when we get to that part of the presentation. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Fred. Thank you, Krista. Um, welcome, everyone, to the assessment coordinator training um, as we prepare you for the spring 24 main three-year assessment. Um, Mindy, if you could just kind of move on real quick. Thank you. Um, as Chris has said earlier, um, I'm Fred Valenzuela. I'm with the NWA um, program team. Um, again, on screen is also Mindy. Um, but we definitely wanted to let you know that we also have two additional team members um, that support us on this program. Um, they won't be joining us today, but again, just wanted to make sure that we called them out for all the hard work that they're doing, um, again, as we prepare for spring and obviously all year long as well. So as we move forward, um, ton of knowledge that we're going to try to drop on you today. Um, some of the things that we'll be covering, obviously, will be an assessment overview, tech readiness. Um, we'll talk about accessibility and, and non-tested codes. Um, we'll get into operational reporting and data and reporting near the end of the presentation. And then we'll kind of close up, um, kind of sharing some resources, tips, and some communication and support avenue that you will have um, available to you prior to and during the assessment. So as we move on, we're gonna get into um, the main through year um, overview. Um, so the, the main through year assessment um, assesses both math and reading at grades three through eight and the second year of high school. Um, for the spring admin, which is required, um, the admin will run from April the 22nd through May 31st. Um, it's majority of it will be delivered online, but there are some accommodated forms that are available um, paper, braille, and or large print. Um, that obviously is all based on the student having the appropriate accommodations in their IEP and their 504 plan. And then a little bit different as far as scores are concerned with spring compared to fall and winter. Fall and winter scores, you only receive RIT data, but for the spring administration, um, you will also receive a main scale score in addition to the RIT. Um, based on the testing time um, and the data that we received from spring 23, the following is recommendations for scheduling the assessment. Um, so for math at three through eight, um, the assessment will have 50 questions. Um, for reading grades three through eight, it'll be 46. Um, and then when you do that, obviously a little bit of an increase when you get to the second year of high school, math will be 54 questions and the second year of high school a semester for reading will be will be made up of 49 um, questions. If we move on, um, again, that estimated time that I just showed you um, does not include the following items. So it doesn't include the time to check your system, to distribute um, the test tickets, launching your secure browser or, or logging in. Um, but if your student um, pauses and there is an inactivity for 15 minutes, they will be logged out. Um, just note that your student does not, um, once they log out, the proctor does not need to assist them to log back in. All they'll need to do is come sit back down and re-enter the information that's available on their test ticket, and the system will take them exactly right to where they left off. Um, there's a student tutorial that will be available. It's an interactive video that um, helps a student um, use the online tools, kind of navigate um, through the assessment, kind of will help them respond to the different item types that will be available on the math and reading assessment. And it also provides them tips um, um, for taking the assessment when it's, you know, as, as we get close, as they get closer to the admin. Um, here's another tool that's available for the for the students. Um, it's an item type sample or practice test. 
it's really to for the students to practice within the platform itself, not actually to prepare for the item, the items that are going to be on the on the, the three-year assessment. Um, it's accessible accessible via the main connections page, um, the DOE webpage, or a link um, via the secure browser. Um, the item type samplers are also available in paper um, for the schools to download um, and print, as well as answer keys will be available as well. Um, we recommend using the item type sampler in the secure browser. Um, it's just an easy way for, for you to test out the devices to make sure that they meet the system requirements before the actual day of testing. So again, it's a little check that you can run to better prepare yourselves for the for the spring admin. Let's see, move forward. Um, a little bit different, obviously, the assessment that we talked about earlier, 50 questions or 60 questions. Um, I mean, 46 questions. Um, the item type sample is, is smaller. Obviously, there's only 15 questions for math, 17 for reading. Um, a test ticket is not needed. Occasionally, a student, as you'll see on the next screen, um, but rarely a student may um, mistakenly take the item, I mean, choose the item type sampler versus the three year assessment. Um, but as we get to the next slide, um, we'll kind of be able to point out some of the differences. Um, and obviously, when they're in the item type sampler, it'll just say test student name. Their student name wouldn't appear as it would as if they were signed in to take the actual assessment. Kind of like what I was just talking about, if you look on the, the left hand um, side of the screen, um, that's where they would log in if they're in the secure browser. So again, that top darker box says main through year assessment underneath it says the item type sample. So again, they're right next to each other. So there could be some confusion. But again, when they get to the, that screen in the middle, um, again, they would see item type sampler when they're in the item type sampler versus the actual main through year assessment. And then that that little screen all the way to the right, that's where they would go in and choose what year, what um, a grade, what subject, and if they need any accommodations for um, the item type sampler. And that was just, again, a, a quick overview, but are there any questions anybody has? All right, then I will hand it off to Mindy and um, she'll go through some more information for the, her presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Fred. Okay. The next section we are going to cover is technology readiness. So the NWEA State Solutions Secure Browser or app is required for all testing devices. And this is that blue NWEA icon shown on the slide. The link listed here, securebrowser.state.nwea.org is where you will go to download the secure browser and also check to ensure that your operating system being used is supported. For those using Chromebooks, devices that are unmanaged are not gonna be able to download the secure browser. We have some tips here for installing the secure testing browser. So it is gonna require a partner code. That partner code is just gonna be ME. Most will likely want to install in bulk and there are options to install over the network or by using MDM software, which can also be found um, in the state solutions uh, system and technology guide. There are also instructions on how to uninstall a previous version of the secure testing browser. We do recommend going in and turning off any auto updates during active testing. So that no surprise updates get installed that could potentially put the system on a newer version that is not yet compatible with the software. For the SAUs and schools that use devices running on Mac OS, there is a new State Solution Secure Browser that is gonna fix some of the issues that some might have occurred um, in the past um, administrations and the past version. It is highly recommended to go in and update to that newest version for a smooth testing and experience. And um, again, that updated version can be found at that securebrowser.state.nwea.org address. 
This slide shows the supported devices. So for window devices, 10 and 11 are supported. For Mac OS, 12, 13, and 14 are supported. The release channel only for Chromebooks with version 109 or later will be supported. And then for iPads, it's iOS 15 and 16 that are supported. This slide is gonna go over the minimum system requirements that staff and teachers will use. So there isn't any special application, um, no secure testing browser. You just go into the web browser itself, just like you have administered in the past. Um, and we just want to note um, that Internet Explorer is not supported, but all of those that are listed um, are. So Google Chrome, um, Firefox, um, Microsoft Edge, Safari, and Safari on iPad. Resources that are available um, are going to be that system and technology guide that will also have an IT readiness checklist. It will go over network and system requirements. Um, how much bandwidth you will need and how to install and uninstall the testing browser as well as all of the allowed lists. There is um, an online readiness tools page. And so this um, has an online readiness check, which we recommend being used prior to any testing sessions. Um, to confirm there are no issues with um, connectivity and that your network is ready for multiple testers at one time. This will also check to ensure that the devices meet the requirements and it will give you a pass or fail indicator. So if there are any pieces that do not meet the requirements, it will list those out on the screen so that you know what um, will need to go in and be changed. If you happen to need to call partner support regarding any issues, please be ready to provide a screenshot of the results from that system check test. Um, and on this page, there's also a school uh, capacity check. And so this is a great tool to use to ensure that there is enough bandwidth um, to support the testing. Every few months, um, we do have system maintenance and releases that take place. Um, these are scheduled to take place over the weekend, so there is little disruption to users. And then during these maintenance and release times, the systems will be unavailable. So there is a software release scheduled for the weekend of April 13th, but there are currently no planned downtimes during the spring testing window, which runs from April 22nd to May 31st. And then there will be a reminder window that will pop up when you log into MapGrowth. Um, which of course is used for the single sign-on into Acacia. And then there is a link um, at the bottom of the slide that has the full release and maintenance calendar. And that covers the technology readiness section. Um, so we'll quickly pause to see if there's any questions. Yeah, so Mindy, there's one question in the chat. If you get to the item sampler, then the technology is ready for the test, correct? And so I would say, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mindy, there's a yes, but there. If you're using a MacBook, you are still strongly recommended to download the updated State Solution Secure Browser because some of the issues we were seeing previously were not with accessing the assessment, but with staying in the assessment once you were in it. Is that accurate? That is accurate. So then, Mindy, there's a follow-up question. If we are not using a MacBook, the old browser is okay? The old browser, if you used it for your fall and winter admits, um, then that is um, that is the, the secure browser to uh, use during spring as well. It's just those Mac devices that we recommend updating to the newest version of the Mac OS secure browser. All right, we will move on to the next section. So we're gonna dive into some of the details on the main through your assessment management system, which you all know now as Acacia. So a quick refresher on the platform. So Acacia is the assessment platform that is used to deliver and manage the assessment. MapGrowth is the platform used for single sign-on to access Acacia. 
And then the map growth platform is also where users are managed and where map growth reports with risk score data from the through year can be accessed. That of course is if students have been rostered in map growth to the correct school and current term. And then the state solution secure browser is how your students will take their assessment, unless of course they're taking a paper-based assessment. And then um, as French, uh, Fred mentioned, the item type sampler is also available within that secure browser, which is a great way to just make sure that your device is meeting all of those requirements. There are three components within Acacia. So Acacia Manage um, is the first one. This is um, the management system that allows administrators and teachers to manage the entire assessment process. So managing students, assigning online tests, monitoring test statuses, and then of course viewing all of those Acacia reports all in one place. Acacia Assess is the main through year assessment platform, which is essentially that secure browser, um, which is that online test delivery platform. And then Acacia Reports is the online reporting suite that provides dynamic and real-time reporting for the assessments. So as we mentioned, logging into Acacia is done via SSO. This means um, you'll be able to use that same username and password that you use to log into Map Growth. User roles will be managed through Map Growth and it will be the same in both systems, though some permissions could vary slightly. School state codes um, are an important piece to that connection, so those should be reviewed on a regular basis. Um, and if that school state code is missing or incorrect, you may not be able to get into the Acacia platform. So then once you log into Map Growth, you'll see that main through year tab and the main through year Acacia landing page, which will take you into Acacia. So once you're into Acacia, this is gonna be the home page. Um, what a user sees on this could slightly vary depending on the user's role. This table provides a high level view of roles and permissions within the management system. So again, management of users will still be done in map growth as well as rostering students in map growth. And then viewing registrations, viewing students accommodations and any um, managing of the online testing that will be done in Acacia. This table shows a high level view of the roles and permissions within the management system. Um, so this will help assist in administering a smooth assessment experience. So you can see that both the district and school assessment coordinators can assign accommodations, they can create and manage student groups, and they can view the manage online testing dashboard and print test tickets. And then proctors will also have access to manage the online testing dashboard. They can also print test tickets and proctor the assessments. And you may see that um, not tested codes um, should only be assigned by the main DOE. And this is actually the slide that I was just talking about. <laughs> I forgot to hit next slide. Um, so I'll give you a, a quick minute to look that over. Okay, so let's talk about rostering in Acacia. So the main DOE is gonna be responsible for rostering students um, and students are gonna be rostered to their reporting school, which is the school they attend and they receive instruction at. Um, NEO is gonna be the source of truth for which students are rostered for each test admin. And this is based on the student information entered um, by the SAU into synergy. So ensuring that student demographics are correct in synergy prior to the students assessing will help reduce additional work and corrections um, during that assessment window or during the cleanup window. So the main DOE will upload a roster file prior to each admin window, and then they will upload a daily Delta um, roster file every weekday morning for any changes that were made in synergy the prior day.
In Acacia, the test registrations for both math and reading are automatically created when students are rostered. And so if you're looking at a registration report, this is gonna translate to a line for each subject. Any edits that might uh, be needed to registrations will be done by SAUs, which will include adding supports or accommodations to a student's profile if needed. It can be done two ways. The first is downloading the registration report from the operational reports, making edits to the fields that can be edited, and then uploading it back into the system. Or you can make those updates within the student's profile under Accessibility Supports tab. If you choose to upload via the registration report, you will want to refer to the registration report format, which is located um, in the Acacia Help resources. And that will help guide you on which fields within that report are able to be modified. So we'll just cover um, some tasks that the SAUs will um, start doing on April 1st when uh, Acacia Management System opens. And then this will go through the test window and then into early summer. So the first thing again is confirming that the school state codes are correct. Um, you might also know this as the school org ID. You'll want to add or confirm supports and accommodations to student registrations as needed. Um, print test tickets as it gets closer to when the test window opens. Rostering in map growth to have access to those map growth reports with RIT score um, from the through year assessment monitoring the student's progress while they are testing, data cleanup, and then of course, accessing those reports during and after the assessment window. So access to the student reports will be available um, to all users in Acacia, and then also within Map Growth, um, if their students have been rostered, that will be available throughout the entire spring admin window. So as we've mentioned um, several times, school state codes do play that important role in the SSO connection between map growth and Acacia. So if it's missing or if it's incorrect, you might not be able to get into Acacia. So the school state codes do need to align with the school state codes that are listed in the infrastructure data on the main DOE website. And so the school state code in Acacia will be the school org ID in your system. Just noting that leading zeros should not be included. And again, these school state codes should be reviewed before and during each assessment window. So users that can make these changes will have a role of system, system admin or district assessment coordinator. And this can be done directly through MARC by going into modify preferences, modify district, and then editing the name and the school code um, under the schools section. You won't have to worry about doing any modifications to school state codes in Acacia because that is all handled through the roster file. So this is just um, making sure that those codes match um, in map growth. So if you use Clever for your map growth rostering, you will need to confirm that Clever is sharing the state ID field with NWEA. And this is located under the school that you will be sharing. And then the state ID field then maps to the school state code in NWEA. And then in Infinite Campus, the field that would need to be shared with Clever is the school number. And then just a reminder, um, if Clever is used for rostering and the school state code is only updated in Map Growth or Mark, that nightly Clever sync is going to override those updates. So it's important that Clever also knows um, and has the most up-to-date school state code. So if you want to have those map growth reports with the through year writ that is available, um, again, those students do need to be rostered in map growth. Um, and then the SAUs will be doing the rostering of students. 
in MAP growth, and that does need to happen before the last day of the assessment window. So for the spring admin, that is May 31st. The student ID is going to be the connector for MAP reporting, and so that also must be the same in both platforms. So when you're doing the MAP growth um, roster, we do recommend having um, the unique ID um, populated in both the student ID and the student state field in MAP growth because it's the student state ID field that is needed for Acacia. All right, let's talk a little bit about student groups. So online testing groups are optional. Um, so you don't need to have an online testing group in order to test your students. However, a reporting group is gonna be required um, for each admin if you want your instructors to be able to see their student results. So for online testing groups, this allows the proctors to view smaller groups of students in the manage online testing. And then test tickets can be printed by grade by those assigned groups. So students can be grouped by grade by their teacher with a group name like Mrs. Smith grade four or grouped by the tests being administered um, with a group name like grade four math. A student does not need to be in the same testing and reporting group, and then students can also be assigned to multiple groups. Um, we do have new functionality where groups can be added for previous admins if it's within the same school year. So student groups are going to be located under the students in the menu. You can create, view, and edit student groups manually, or you can upload um, using a file for this, you would go to upload in the menu, also under students, um, to upload those student groups in bulk. So similar to the registration report, if you're wanting to upload student groups in bulk, you can locate the student group upload format and the group upload template in the, the Acacia Help Resources. There's also a quick reference guide in there for creating student groups that will walk you through the steps to either upload in bulk or create manually. So viewing student groups, this is gonna be done in Manage Online Testing. So once you enter your search selections of the test admin, subject, testing grade, and organization, you will see the results for the groups um, that have been created that you have access to. You can view by all students or by the group name created. So it's a little hard to see um, in this screenshot, but there is a magnifying glass. Um, that is what you would click that will take you into the group where you can see the status, the progress, among other things for the students within that group. And that is um, the section on assessment management in Acacia, but we'll quickly pause to see if there's any questions. All right, we will move on. So the next section that we're gonna go through is accessibility. So accessibility is going to be universal tools, designated support, and accommodations. So as you can see from this slide, um, accommodations are going to require an IEP or 504 plan. Designated supports are determined on an individual basis. And then universal tools are going to be available for all students. The types of accessibility features fall into two buckets, non-embedded. So these are features that are provided locally that do not change the assessment within the platform. And then embedded, which impact the delivery of the assessment within the platform. The universal tools um, that are gonna be available to students um, include scratch paper. That of course is a non-embedded tool. And then the embedded universal tools for math and reading include calculators, 
This is going to be specific um, to specific items in math. And then the allowed use of a calculator and the type of calculator will be dependent on the testing grade. There's a color contrast, um, which gives the student the ability to change the color on the screen um, to adjust to their visual needs or preferences. There's graph paper available for the math assessments. There's a guideline that can assist with reading the text. Help videos that will show your students how to respond to different question types or to use the tools. A highlighter to highlight any text. Keyboard navigation to navigate through the assessments by using a keyboard, which of course will be dependent on the device being used. There is a notepad um, where students can take notes on an item. For math, there's a protractor to measure angles. That is also going to be for specific items. There's a math reference sheet. This is going to have um, conversion tables, formulas, etc. And then there is a Zoom feature where the student can enlarge the text and graphics on the screen. Next, we're going to go over our designated supports. So these increase the accessibility without altering the construct of the assessment item and it is determined on an individual basis by an educational team. So an educational team is two or more education professionals with knowledge of a student's performance. And designated supports do need to be consistent with the student's normal routine during classroom instruction. Non-embedded designated supports can be viewed both and edited um, if needed by either the registration file or the student's profile. Non-embedded designated supports include an individual or separate setting, a small group setting, bilingual word glossary for multilingual learners, and mathematical support for assessments. Um, some examples of supports that can be provided um, but do not need to be reflected within Acacia include a translated version of the math reference sheet, assisted technology, medical devices, visual aids, auditory devices, clarification on directions, or the student being able to read aloud to themselves in an individual setting. Text-to-speech, or TTS, is an embedded designated support, which is going to be available in English. Guidance for text-to-speech can be found in the Accessibility Guide, which is located on the main connections page. The need for TTS as a designated support does need to be indicated on the student's profile. Again, that's under the Accessibilities tab. And if a student is using text-to-speech, all text is going to be read aloud in math. Um, in reading, the passages um, will not be read. It will only be the questions and answers. Text-to-speech can be assigned manually or by uploading the registration report. Um, again, to assign manually, it's going to be located um, under the student's profile in accessibility supports and then by assigning text-to-speech to the subject um, where it's needed. And then as um, usual, any updates that you are making, just be sure to hit that, gray, uh, that green Save Updates button. So if a student should have text-to-speech but it wasn't assigned prior to the students starting their assessment, this can still be added. So the proctor will need to ask the student to log out of their assessment. And then the proctor will need to contact the district or school assessment coordinator who will go into the student's profile and add text-to-speech. Once that's been added, the student can just log back in and they will have text-to-speech for the remainder of their assessment. When we talk about accommodations, these are changes in procedures or materials that are used to increase equitable access during the assessment for students. 
um, again with documentation of the need on an IEP or a 504 plan. Non-embedded accommodations, again, can be viewed and edited um, by the registration file or the student's profile. So these can include a human reader for paper-based tests, a scribe, American Sign Language, um, using a calculator throughout the entire math assessment, and a human um, reader for reading passages for students in grade six or higher with a um, documented disability. Embedded accommodations, um, so paper-based forms, these are also can be viewed and edited um, by the registration file or the student's profile. Um, so paper-based forms include standard print, um, large print, and braille. Um, and then just a reminder that any paper-based forms are not going to be adaptive. Standard paper and large print forms are available for students with an IEP or 504 plan um, that requires assessments to be paper-based and not administered online. The standard print is 12, uh, size 12 fonts. Um, these are gonna be print on demand. Large print is a size 18 font, and these are gonna need to be ordered and then would be shipped to the school, um, just as braille assessment forms would be. So the use of a paper-based form does need um, to go through the main DOE for approval, um, and the school will need to complete that request form. And then for any paper-based forms, once those are completed, a proctor or scribe is gonna need to transcribe the student's responses into Acacia, exactly how the student has responded. And that does need to be completed by the last day of the window, um, so May 31st. And then, of course, any paper-based materials would also need to be destroyed um, by May 31st. We're going to quickly go over not tested codes on this next slide. So not tested codes or NTCs are solely used by the main DOE to track special circumstances for which the student's assessment data is not going to be included in the SAUs or school's aggregated data. And again, only the main DOE is going to enter these NTCs into the Acacia platform. So if there is any NTC that is entered um, not by the DOE, those will be removed. And then we'll um, quickly pause again to see if there's any questions um, from the accessibilities and NTC sections. Yeah, so Mindy, we actually have a question first that's kind of a callback to assessment management. Um, so just seeking some clarification, if a reporting group or an online testing group was created during a previous administration this academic year, so fall or winter, will those groups still be available for the spring administration? They are available, um, yes, and students can be added to those groups. Excellent. And a question in a similar vein, but if accessibility supports were assigned to a student during a previous administration, will those accessibility supports still be assigned to the student for the spring? They do not. Um, any accessibility supports um, do not carry over from admin to admin. So those will need to be updated again in the registration um, file or the student's profile. Excellent. I'll handle the next question. Um, so who do we contact with parent refusal to test so an NTC can be entered? Um, so parent refusal does not require an NTC because the student is counted as a non-participant. Um, just as they would if they didn't take the test for any other reason. So NTCs are really used for invalidations um, and then for emergency medical waivers and then used by NWEA behind the scenes, the RMV for other purposes. Um, but there's no need to reach out for parent refusals. All right, we're ready to move on to the next section. 
I think we're good. Perfect. All right, so the next section is preparing for and monitoring the assessment. So printing test tickets is gonna be one of the first things um, that will need to be done before students are able to log in and take their assessment. Test tickets are available in a couple formats. Um, a PDF format, this can be with one test ticket per page or with four test tickets per page. There is also an option to export um, into a CSV, um, which can have up to 100 test tickets within that one export. You can print test tickets in two places. The first is manage online testing. The second is within the student's profile under the test registration tab. From there, you would go to view test session um, under actions, and then there will be a PDF icon um, in the action column. This essentially is gonna take you back into manage online testing, but it's just gonna be for that one student. Proctors can print on demand, so there is no need to wait for an assessment coordinator to print and provide test tickets. And then just another reminder that students do not need to be in an online testing group to take their tests. They just need to have their test ticket. So this slide um, shows you where in Manage Online Testing you'd be able to print the test tickets at and then where you would select if you want to print all test tickets, if you want to print just a selected subset of test tickets um, or generate that CSV. Um, and then on the slide, it also gives a visual of how test tickets will look um, if you would print four per page or what that export is gonna look like in a CSV. So let's talk a little bit about um, the testing progress in Manage Online Testing. So testing progress is able to be viewed at a group, an SAU or school level. So it's gonna show you how many students are ready to test, how many students are in progress of their test, if there's any alerts, for example, if a student gets disconnected or encounters an issue within the assessment um, and they're not able to continue forward, how many students may have completed and submitted um, their assessment, and in rare situations, if an assessment has been voided, which you could temporarily see um, if an assessment needs to be reset, which we'll get over to uh, in a few slides. Um, to refresh your view within Manage Online Testing, all you need to do is click the Refresh View icon. Um, this is also going to show you when that last update was. You can use the testing status report in operational reports to see where your students are um, in the assessments in a file export. Um, however, since operational reports can only be generated every four hours, monitor online testing is where you're going to be able to see those real-time updates of the testing progress of your students. So should a student need to have a test reset, um, that does need to go through the main DOE for approval. And so the definition of a reset is when the student will receive a new test ticket. And then upon logging in, they're gonna start at the beginning. So any previous answers and results are deleted. The scenarios that will qualify for an assessment to be reset are listed out below. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but there are a couple new scenarios for spring. So the first is if the student received no RIT score after 72 hours of completing their assessment um, due to a high standard error of measurement. And then the other is if the student's RIT score decreased by 20 or more points since the most recent admin of the through year assessment. There is a reset process flow that can um, help you determine whether or not the student qualifies for a reset. If they do, you can then move forward with filling out the request um, for a reset form to kick off that process. Starting in spring um, 24, any reset does need to be submitted by that form by 4 p.m. on May 24th. So any request submitted after that time is not gonna be able to be approved.
And then this slide um, is showing a visual of that form for resets. Um, and then the form along with the reset process flow is available on the main connections page um, under the section main reset requests. If you are submitting a reset form um, in order to not hold up the reset process, it's important to make sure the information is correct and the elements on the form are not missing. So this includes ensuring that the requester is putting the information into the correct fields and that the correct code is being used as well as the student's um, nine digit ID. There is a field um, that is the testing school field. So we wanna go over what the purpose of that field is. So this field is found within the test tabs uh, within the student's profile. So the testing school is gonna automatically populate with the reporting school information that comes from the roster file. So again, this is a school that the student attends and receives their instruction at. Should there be a situation where the student is not gonna be taking the assessment at their reporting school, then a testing location would need to be used to designate an alternate testing location. If the testing school does change from the reporting school, that testing school is not gonna have access to student results. So they would need to um, request that from the reporting school, um, which was reflected in the roster and registration file. Rostering for students at a regional or out of state program. Um, so as you know, students are rostered to the school they attend. Um, and then any student reports are provided to that attending school. So this will allow educators and staff at the program location that administer the assessment to have access to the student results to help inform instruction. If the responsible SAU would like to see the student's test status or results, the attending school can share that upon the SAU's request. And there might be some scenarios where the student won't need to be rostered at a regional or out-of-state program, but there will be coordination behind the scenes for the student to take their assessments. Um, and I believe Krista will be following up um, if you have a student that falls into that scenario. So let's talk a little bit about how to transfer a student in Acacia. So when a student transfers schools, that student needs to be exited from Synergy by the previous school and then enrolled in Synergy by the new school. And so once both of those actions have taken place in Synergy, um, the main DOE will upload that daily roster Delta file into Acacia and that, it, that transfer information will be in that file and then it will be reflected in Acacia. Both of those actions do need to be completed in order for that to happen. So it is gonna be the responsibility of the new school to ensure that a student has the opportunity to take their assessment if they've already started it somewhere else. If you fall into that scenario, the new school can contact either the main DOE or the previous school to get that student's test ticket information if that test has already been started. Of course, you would want to provide that test ticket information in a secure manner. Student transfers also are going to need to be done on the map growth side. So in order to do this, the old SAU would need to remove the current term from the student's profile in map growth. So the new SAU would then be able to roster the student as normal in map growth. If the same SSID is in two different SAUs in map growth, the student data in Acacia is not going to be updated until that conflict um, is resolved. So these steps are really crucial to ensure that the state student IDs in map growth and Acacia match. And then um, there is a a uh, connections article that can walk you through the steps to remove that test term from a student's profile in map growth. So 
So let's talk about those transfers and uh, potential of map growth errors. So users with a system admin, data admin, or DAC role in Acacia, they're going to have access to a student errors report and operational um, reports. So starting in the Spring 24 admin, this report is actually going to be available throughout the entire admin and through the last day of the SAU cleanup window. Um, so again, if a student has transferred from one SAU to another, it's crucial that both Synergy and Map Growth re reflect the current roster details, or you're going to see a duplicate student in the upload file error. And so that error occurs when a student is rostered to both their prior SAU and school and their current SAU and school. And so to resolve this, the student needs to be rostered to the correct reporting school and term in map growth. And it is the responsibility of the prior SAU and school to make sure that the student has been removed from their map growth roster for the current term. So if you're in that scenario where a student is being transferred and it's not updating and you need to have some help with coordinating or finding out who the prior SAU or school is, um, NWEA Partner Support can provide the school and the school state code to you so that you can coordinate um, with the prior SAU to get those errors resolved. If you want to maintain historical data in map growth, SAUs can submit a form to move student data between districts. And so this form can be found on the main connections page. It's under the assessment coordinator uh, resource section. And then the subsection is map growth resources. And then um, for clever users, all you need to do is stop sharing the student as part of your regular Clever Sync for that term, and then that will automatically unenroll them. And we'll take another quick pause to see if there's any questions um, from preparing and monitoring the assessment. No questions in the chat. Perfect. All right, the next section is the proctor and student experience. So when the student is in their scheduled test session and they're ready to begin, the first step is gonna be for them to launch the secure browser. As Fred mentioned um, in earlier slides, it's gonna be important to make sure that the students um, know to select the main through year option and not the item type sampler option. So once they've selected the main through year option, the student will enter in the information from their test ticket. So their username, password, and session ID. Once they log in, the next screen that they will see is gonna show their name, grade, and subject. And so the proctor is going to um, want the students to confirm that what they are seeing on the screen is their correct information. Once they have confirmed their information is correct, they can select the next button which is gonna bring them to a stop sign. And then from there, students are gonna wait until the proctor gives verbal approval that the students can begin the assessment. So this is the summary screen where they're going to verify their name, grade, and subject. And then this slide shows that stop sign, um, which they will wait at until the proctor gives the go ahead to click the next button and start the assessment. Once the student has begun their assessment, if they need to take a break or step away, they can simply log out of the assessment by using the exit button at the top right corner. So in Acacia, the student's progress is saved after every question. So when they log back in, they will pick up right where they left off. This is also true if their computer shuts down or there is a power outage. For assessment security, if there is a, there is going to be an inactivity warning, as Fred mentioned earlier as well. So this is going to happen if the student happens to leave their machine on or they forget to log out. Um, there will be a time warning message after being idle for 14 and a half minutes. 
Once that time warning message pops up, they then have about 30 seconds to let the system know they're still there before they get a message that the system has logged them out due to inactivity. If they receive that second message, clicking exit is gonna be their only option. But again, all they need to do is log back in with their test ticket and they'll pick up right where they left off. Once the assessment is completed, the students are gonna see a congratulations, you have finished your assessment message on the screen. And then um, starting in the Spring 24 admin, they're gonna see that blue exit button right in the middle of their screen as well. Um, so they can use that to submit and um, exit the assessment. All right, so let's talk about the proctor's experience. So um, as you've learned from earlier slides, um, proctors can easily manage um, testing progress from within Manage Online Testing. This information is also available in the testing status report, but Manage Online Testing is gonna have that refresh button and it's in real time, um, as opposed to having to wait several hours um, to have a updated testing status report ran. The testing status report could be helpful um, for knowing what students might need additional sessions um, scheduled if they were unable to complete their assessment in that first session. The testing progress icons and descriptions are going to help um, know the status of where the student is within their assessment and session. And then once um, students have completed and submitted their test, they're not gonna be able to get back into their session. There are a couple ways to report an issue or problem with an item. So if you feel there is an item that does not have the correct answer, or there's maybe an issue with the content of the item, these can be reported to us. So we do a lot of vigorous um, checking in our QA process, but um, there are times when there might be something that you'd like us to look into. So you can do this through the main connections page under contact main partner support in that need help section. And WEA will need to know the state student ID, the grade and subject, session name, and the item sequence or question number. So be sure to get all of that information when you can. And then um, you'll want to include main through year problem item in the subject line. And then of course, for security reasons, please don't take any photos or provide any detailed information around the content of that item. Any questions in the chat from this section? No, no questions in the chat. Okay. The next section is operational reports. So operational reports are going to provide assessment coordinators um, another way to track progress throughout the assessment window. So again, testing statuses, um, tracking paper-based materials, um, map growth rostering errors, to name a few. These operational reports can provide you with data that you might previously have had to call partner support on. So to access operational reports um, from the main menu, you will go to the report section and then click on operational. From there, you will select the organization and the re uh, report type from the dropdown. Um, and then the information about that report will appear um, and then you'll be able to download um, that report. And then operational reports are generated and can be generated every four hours. So here we list out the operational reports. Um, just quickly, the registration report is gonna be an export of all of the students that were rostered. And so this is also where you can update accommodations and supports in bulk. Student demographic information should not be updated here because, again, that the source of truth comes from Synergy. 
So any updates that are needed to demographics should be first updated in Synergy, um, which will then be updated in Acacia once that daily Delta file has been uploaded. The NTC usage reports um, will show you any NTCs that have been assigned. Um, but of course, these should only be entered by the main DOE, so that report should be relatively short. The summary test status report, this is more of a high level report where you can see the totals for how many students haven't started, how many students have completed their assessment. And then the testing status report details the status of each student's assessment. So it, it dials down into um, their progress. So whether they have started, um, they've completed, or maybe they've encountered an issue. Student mobility report, that is gonna show you um, students that have transferred from one school to another so that you can make sure you have um, all of your students reg uh, registered and they're ready to take their assessment. Um, the registration reports, um, this is on here, yeah, okay. Sorry. <laughs> the material orders report provides detail um, for any school that has requested a paper based assessment. And then the organization report lists what schools are part of an SAU within the system. So this is provided um, from the data that comes from the state org file every year. So you can't make any modifications or changes here, but you can make sure that everything looks correct. And then lastly is that map growth roster errors report. Um, this is gonna have any of those errors that have occurred from the sync from map growth to Acacia. Um, that report again is available at the start of the test window um, on April 22nd and then available through the last day of the cleanup window on um, June 7th. So with this report being available throughout the whole admin window and not just that cleanup window, it gives you a head start on resolving any of those errors. All right, we're going to get into data and reporting within Acacia. So there are a couple new features that you might notice um, within the student score section for spring 24. These are intended um, for easier navigation. So just real quickly, the report download icon has been moved to the top of the page. Uh, report view icons within a report have been moved to the left side of a page and they're now in a tab format. Um, any demographic filters um, have moved to the top of the page. And then there's some reports where you're gonna see a little pencil icon. This is where you can quickly adjust some of the filters. And then lastly is the organization data report is now available in a CSV format. So to access these reports um, from the menu, you select uh, student scores. And then once you are in student scores, you will see um, the tabs at the top right um, to show you the different types of reports um, that you can run. So we'll quickly go over um, some of those reports that are available. So the SSDF, this is the student score data file. This is gonna contain all valid test events for the assessments completed within the administration by grade and subject. It's gonna include the main scale score, main scale score SEM, writ achievement percentile at a course content and instructional area levels. Um, SSDFs um, are available after the test window has closed and all test events have been validated. In the spring admins only, you have the organization reports. These are by district, um, school, and group. Um, and it will show you student performance for that level. And then um, these reports can be used after testing to see their results um, that you can then use um, as part of your instructional decision making process. And then for all admins, um, there will be the dynamic student report. And so this is going to show the student's achievement on the main three year assessment. It will reflect um, the writ for the content area, writ for each instructional area, the student scale score, 
achievement percentile, and then it will also show you the student's item responses, so whether they answered a, que a question correct, incorrect, um, or partially correct by specific content standards. This slide is just a little more detail on that organization report um, available in the spring admins. This slide shows you an example of what that output of the organization report might look like. Here we have some additional detail on the dynamic student report. Um, so again, it's just offering you student level data to support your students' progress. It's going to identify the standards um, which students were able to successfully answer questions to, um, and then the test details around the student's engagement. So how long it took them to take the test, what tools they might have used, and then it can help you answer if your students are on track um, and what their relative strengths and suggested areas of focus might be. This is an example of the Dynamic Student Report, or DSR. We do want to note um, that the main specific scale score is only going to be available in the spring. A couple more reports that are available. Um, the RIT report, this is available for all admins. It's going to show the RIT score for students in an organization. Um, it will include the student's overall RIT in math and reading, along with the achievement percentile and RIT for each category. Demographic report, another report only available in the spring, and it's going to show the average scale score in the selected content area for students in various demographics or targeted groups. And then the ISR, which is the individual student report, also available only in the spring admins. It's designed to show um, students, parents, uh, and families uh, their achievement on the main through year um, math and reading assessment. And so educators can print these out and distribute after the spring admin has closed and all of the test events have been validated. Um, some additional detail here on the RIT reports. And then um, an example of what a RIT report might look like. Again, just some more information on the demographic reports. And then um, an example of what that report um, might look like. And then the ISRs, of course, um, are just designed to show that student level data um, to support their progress and to show how they're performing relative to grade level expectations in both math and reading. And so this is an example of page one. Um, it's going to show the achievement levels and the overall student's performance um, in math and reading. And then page two. Um, it's just going to show some additional information about the student's achievements um, levels and then the math instructional area scores. There are two new reports that are going to be available starting in spring 24. The first is a comparison summary report. So this is um, aggregated at a state SAU and school level based on overall scale score. So you will have the ability to select the organization, school years, test admins, grades, subjects. And then once that report is created, you can drill down into student demographics. You also have the ability to save this report using a bookmark feature um, so that you can refer to that report later. It will only be available in the spring admins only, but you will be able to go back and run this report for the spring 23 admin. The second report is the student results file. And so this is going to contain reportable student level test results from an organization. Um, all grades and subjects um, will be in one file. It will include student enrollment and demographic data, test events data, overall scale score, and 
reporting category data, RIT score, and instructional area data, and any accommodations. And so both of these um, new reports will be available um, when management system opens on April 1st. So you'll see two new tabs under student scores. Again, this slide um, is just a different visual of the information we just went over. This next slide um, is showing you what that report builder will look like in Acacia. So you'll select the report type, organization, um, school years, admin, grades, subjects. Um, and then you'll also see that you have um, filters at the bottom. And so this is what a comparison summary report might look like. On this slide, um, we show you how to use the bookmark option to save your report. So once you run a comparison summary report, um, you'll be able to see the bookmark icon. Um, you can go in and create a name, um, save that report, and then you access your saved reports from the report builder screen. And once you click view saved reports, it will show a list of any saved reports that you have saved. Student results file, again, just another slide, different visual of the information. Um, student results file creator, again, you'll see in the UI um, the different options to create that report. And then this is a visual of the student results file. These next few slides um, are some examples you're probably all familiar with at this point, um, but just at different levels. So this is a example here of an SAU level report. It will show you the number of schools um, in that SAU within the different achievement levels. This next slide um, shows a different view of the schools. Um, and then it drills down to um, the number of students completed, average scale score, um, score levels. And then you can click into um, each of the schools for more information. So another visual of reports at a school level, you'll see um, those floating tabs at the left where you can click to see medium scale scores, the number of students tested, medium RIT. And then on the right side, um, the median comparison is broken out by school district and state. Another visual, um, very similar, this is at a school or group level. And then um, just going over again um, when reports are available. So operational reports are available throughout the assessment window. Um, the one exception is that SSDF. Um, for spring, that is scheduled to be available to you on July 15th. Data and reporting in Acacia is gonna be available 24 to 72 hours from when a student completes their assessment. Um, ISRs for spring um, will be available a week after the SSDF, so on July 22nd. And then starting in spring 24, your map growth reports with RIT from the three-year assessment um, will also be available within that 24 to 72 hours um, for, from when a student completes their assessment. That's, of course, if they've also been rostered correctly in map growth. And that was quite a bit of information on reports. So we'll see if there are any questions out there. Um, so some of these questions, Mindy, we'll make sure to follow up on in the Q&A um, regarding perhaps the most time efficient way to approach the CSV file for group rostering. And then um, I'll connect with you on some of the other elements about what reports can be exported to PDFs and CSVs. Um, so okay. given the time we have remaining, I think we can move on. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Krista.
So we are nearing um, the end of the slide deck. Um, so let's just review some things, um, again, to help you prepare for a successful spring admin. So reviewing those technical requirements, running that system check test uh, prior to um, a test session to just test your network um, is gonna be best practice for a smooth assessment experience. It also includes confirming you're on the latest version of the secure browser. Um, so again, if you're not, you will need to uninstall previous versions before you can install that latest version. And then of course, um, reviewing um, main DOE guidelines for accessibility, identifying students that might need um, accommodations and support, and then reviewing scheduling guidance from the main DOE along with reviewing their assessment security handbook. The main connections page is gonna have um, a ton of great resources available. Um, all resources for spring 24 should be updated um, mostly by the end of this week. There might be um, a couple that will trickle into next week. Um, and then there's gonna be a section um, for spring 24 on the homepage. And then that is gonna show you information, training resources. It's where you'll find the slide deck, the Q and A um, after um, we've been able to get the Q&A put together. This slide, um, again, is showing links to that system and technology guide, online readiness tools page, um, and then there is a link to that assessment security handbook. And then a couple of suggestions um, we always want to share um, is uh, enabling audio for any devices used for TTS and providing headphones, um, making sure that all of your students have the appropriate accessibility features assigned, um, that proctors have the access that they need um, and are able to utilize manage online testing. And then I'm gonna hand it back over to Fred to wrap it up, but a couple troubleshooting tips to keep in mind. So again, in Acacia, the student's assessment is saved after every answer. So if a student does run into issues, the first step is gonna be to have them log out, close the app, log back in. If that doesn't work, the second step would be a full reboot on your device. Um, and then if the first two steps don't resolve the issue, then um, you would want to contact partner support. Um, and again, there is no proctor action needed for a student to log back in. So they just need to have that test ticket information. And I am going to hand it back over to Fred and he is gonna go over the last handful of slides for you. Thank you, Mindy. Um, now we're going to get into, like Mindy said, we're going to get into the last few slides here. I'm going to talk about a few area, a few avenues of support um, that you will have prior to leading up to and during the assessment. So let's move forward. Um, if you have any technical issues um, with the Acacia platform, with the state secure browser, um, you need help support um, administering the online assessment. Um, please feel free to reach out to our NWA main support team. Um, they're available Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then obviously, as Mindy mentioned, um, the main connections page um, has a ton of information um, that can help you as well. Um, another avenue for, um, for support, um, if you have issues um, needing to fix students who are incorrectly appear or do not appear on your roster, or you need help determining if a student is eligible for the main through year assessment, um, please reach out to main DOE MED MS help desk. Um, obviously, they've got the phone uh, number and the email address so they can be contacted there. Um, for any policy related questions, um, those will go to Krista. Um, again, there's plenty of resources that can help you find your answer. Um, obviously, but if, you, if you've gone through a number of different files or, or guides and cannot locate that information, um, please feel free to reach out to, to Chris at the DOE. Um, kind of reiterate here some of the, the high-level important dates for the spring admin. 
Um, as stated previously, May 1st is when MS opens up to all main SAU, so a few days more and, and that'll open up. Um, there are the, 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 the assessment window dates, April 22nd through May 31st. Um, again, if you want your student map growth through your RIT to appear in your map growth reports, make sure that your students are rostered in map growth uh, prior to May 31st. And um, just note that June 7th is the last day um, for map growth rostering errors to be fixed. And then the last major task that will come out of the spring admin will be the, the SAU cleanup window. And that takes place between June 3rd and June 7th. Um, again, everything will need to be addressed by June 7th, um, especially those fixing those map growth rostering errors. Um, you'll need to update any student demographic information that may be missing or incorrect. And then again, your, your best um, resource here is to go view the uh, the cleanup window checklist, and, and that's available on your main connections page. So um, a wealth of information that we just provided you in the last hour and a half. Um, kind of winding down here, but want to open it up for any questions that are in the chat or any, if you've got any last minute questions, please feel free to enter them and we'll try to address them before we end the, today's call. If there aren't any questions, we thank you for your time today and we hope the spring admin goes well and we're here to support you um, in any way that we can.